Yeah. All right, so let's, ta let's declare a sanctuary declaration here. Yeah. Since its inception, the Redstone Labor Temple Association's mission has never wavered. That mission is to promote, preserve, and protect the Redstone Labor Temple as a place for diverse, community-based, cultural, labor, and social services organizations, individual artists, and small businesses which serve the Mission District and the larger community of San Francisco. Community organizations, artists, and activists have all found a unifying voice within the Redstone Labor Temple. The Redstone Labor Temple has been a sanctuary to many people in the city throughout its history, including those who are oppressed by institutional and government forces and economic and political institutions. The building offers people a place to exist with dignity and be respected and treated as equals. Reaffirming our belief in the value of every human life, we remain committed to this mission today. As members of the Redstone Labor Temple Association, we hold firm in our belief that every human has a right to a dignified life. Every human has a right to make a home for themselves and to be acknowledged as part of the community. We know that every person plays a role in their society and that every person belongs where they chose to settle. We will remain committed to keeping our community intact and not letting our community be divided by oppressive forces. On this day, February 27, 2019, we, the members of the Redstone Labor Tempo Association, declare ourselves a sanctuary community. We will, not, we will not cooperate with misguided and unconstitutional government forces to detain or deport undocumented immigrants. We are in solidarity with the people of our community who have been marginalized and mistreated as a result of prejudice and discrimination. Oh. We have come together and we have come together in to oppose such attacks on human dignity. As a community, we vow to uphold human dignity and the value of every life. We vow to stand together against hate, hate, racism, sexism, xenophobia, homophobia, and prejudice. We vow to defend our communities from the actions of oppressive forces. We vow to stand against any government institution that does not value every human life as equal. We vow to stand with San Francisco's immigrant communities. Today we vow to not let walls divide us, but to break down those walls and to do whatever we can, whenever we can, to protect our brothers and sisters in oppressed populations. The Redstone Labor Temple has long been a sanctuary for the impoverished, the homeless, the undocumented, and the oppressed communities and their allies. The Redstone Labor Temple was originally created to unionize workers in a fight to end unjust working conditions and worker exploitation. Over time, the tenants of the Redstone Labor Temple have broadened the scope of the building solidarity to offer resources and general guidance to a broad spectrum of San Francisco residents. From its early history until now, the mission of the Redstone Labor Temple has been to unite community members. Last sentence. It will continue to do so as long as the building remains in community control. <laughs> by the Reverend Monique Ortiz, pastor of Iglesia of the Terana, Santa Maria and Santa Marta in the San Francisco Night Ministry. Sisters and brothers, we are standing on holy ground and this is a sanctuary community. It is. Amen, let us pray. O oh, Holy One, source of all life and source of all love, we gather at this hour in thanksgiving for having brought each one of your sons and daughters here together to deeply bless this sanctuary community and the important work that each of the social and economic justice organizations, agencies, and artists <coughs> carry out day after day. We ask that you may bless them together and individually as they continue to uphold and fight for the value and dignity of each human life, and as they hold the torch of justice in one hand, may they always feel your hand holding the other. We also take this time to thank you and to remember all of the heroes and silent heroes that have walked through the doors 
of this beautiful historic landmark, Redstone Labor Temple, from 104 years ago to the present. Bless us, O oh God, as we go forth about the business of each day, serving, caring, loving those who need us the most. As you uphold each, may your spirit move in and through us with courage and fortitude, in kindness and love, in equality, social and economic justice, in the ongoing beauty and preciousness of each human life, in creating a sanctuary for all without exception here in our lives and in our hearts. We thank you for this blessing and for the beauty of the, this celebration that we are about to enter. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Now we bless. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now we're going to have we bless the grounds of this building. Liberation Orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> It's all online petition. So if you get one of those leaflets and then read over it and go online and uh, let's make this happen. So
no nos han debilitado, sino que nos han hecho más fuertes. Seguimos en la lucha, seguimos por los derechos de los inmigrantes. Me gustó mucho el teatro que hicieron ahora. Eso es realmente lo que nosotros estamos diciendo. Fuera la mira, fuera la mira de nuestras comunidades, fuera la mira de nuestras familias. Y que no estamos aceptando que nos separen, y que no vamos a seguir aceptando que nos separen a las familias. Y que somos muy fuertes, y que no tenemos miedo, y que no nos estamos echando para atrás. Que estamos en la lucha y vamos a seguir en la lucha. Muchas gracias. Supervisors are primarily Republican, 
and they're not afraid to tell home care workers to their face that they should not make more than minimum wage. So the San Francisco example is giving hope to thousands of workers across the state of California. Not only that, I'm proud to say because of what you all did, San Francisco home care workers are now going to be the highest paid home care workers in the country. Yeah. Um, now, I, I know not to get in the way of you all and the music, so I'm going to be brief. I came in from Sacramento where I live. And both of my children were born here in San Francisco. What I would just say briefly about the fight that we're in to preserve the dignity and the soul, not just of this building, but the symbolism that this building means for this community. Both of my parents were organizers with Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers and spent a lot of years here in the 1960s. The Mission District then was very different than it is now. And the people that we're up against to preserve this building the symbolism and the fight that this means has much larger implications than this just building. So I know as organizers that when we lift up our voices, when we come together, and when we don't take no as an answer, that I know that we're gonna win SEIU 2015 and our sisters and brothers in the union stand with you all as part of this fight. Hasta la victoria siempre. against the predatory developers whose main interest would be to uh, gut this building, uh, repurpose it for more profitable purposes, and to help in uh, pushing up, uh, the, uh, the increasing the gentrification in this neighborhood. No way. And the community is, is joined together to fight against the monster and the mission which they have proposed for right across the street. Two twin towers of luxury apartments. Now the community has now fought them to a stalemate in the planning commission. And we need to be sure to support them and continue in the struggle to uh, protect this neighborhood, to keep the working class character in this neighborhood. Uh, a number of corporations have bid on this building. Uh, we've heard um, that we work, which is now the largest, uh, by some reports, the largest landlord in the city. They're, they're the ones that rent out the space by the hour. You sit on a sofa and you work on your startup or maybe you get a desk space. Well, that, that company is definitely not going to want uh, this building to be f uh, full of low budget worker advocacy organizations, homeless rights organizations, artists. We could be, we're guaranteed that they would, uh, uh, they would um, force us out of the building. On the other side, the Mission Economic Development Agency, a nonprofit community-based organization, Woo! has put in a bid for the building. Yeah. And we need to get the word out about that and show the community support for their efforts because they have pledged to uh, retain the existing tenants in this building and to preserve it as a community center and make sure it's full of organizations that are fighting for social and economic justice and artists. So there's, one, there's three actions that you can all take. There's this flyer that's by the front door, and also if you all would sign in on the sign-in sheet so we can keep in touch with you and let you know what's happening. The first action, there's an online petition. So you can add your name to all of these people in the change.org petition. 3,400. Yeah. The second... 
The second is uh, the Facebook page. Or the third is, um, the second is if you are in an organization, in a union, there's an email address to uh, send a message saying that your organization wants to sign on to the organizational sign on list. The third is a, uh, well, there's a Facebook page that you can stay in touch with what we're doing. And then the third is a GoFundMe site. So you can make a donation right now. You can take out your phone. Or if you have, uh, you know, if you're old school and you have paper <coughs> checks, you can make out a check to the Redstone Labor Temple Association. And we also have buckets that are going around. And Don, Don and Peter, and Gary, can you help in passing those buckets around? Right now. Who, who here at this moment can say that they're going to donate $100? Jack, Jack. Beautiful. Who else? Who else can pledge $100? Beautiful. What's your name? Sasha. Yay! Sasha. Beautiful. Thank you. Who else? Roger Scott. Thank you, Roger. Who else can pledge $100? $100. Oh, wow. Miguel Perez. He's attended on the third floor in 301 with Radio Flash. It's an online radio station. These are the kind of organizations we need to protect this building. Rachel. Rachel is uh, with the Women's Global Strike for Peace up in uh, Suite 301. Who else? Hundred dollars. Beautiful. Oval oh, Hill. spoken to her hands. Stone, how long have you known her bandanas? In mud we danced, mud. Now with mud and powdered milk we feed our starving young. O moon of black tit, heart swimming in it like weeping fish. O Haiti, heavy with blood, red dug bursting with sun over the Artemides. Around the sun, they say, they sit and pound the music out of it. So those men are red from the flames and black in the palm coronas, pounding, pounding golden atoms out of the sun's belly to warm the bellies of the hungry. This poor family of drums leaning against one another, thin, unfed. Oh, for the day that big with revolt and all the hills griot again. When you lie on your side and I feed you and you wake with a dream of Bukman in your gut. 
And though the king of death has fled, his prince remains an evil junta on our backs. So we're a sponge, drunken with blood, as Jacques Rumen said. And either way it seems, it's hing hang fu nim pot tiklat, but come, after so many years with soleil couché, malé pajam couché, let's be light on our side, like Jean Jezi, ta dinan lang, evre ache natova. Two, it's an ordinary fact, like a coconut, crack open, and inside, there's a squirrel, and inside the squirrel, a tree, and on the tree, a coconut. Knock, knock, who's there? Crick and crack, a local duet, inside the coconut's milky white meat. At a work in BHM, the usual irony, we keep a surplus stillness in order that the bee be what it be when it comes rushing with honey justice out of the kung hive. There's a tam-tam beat for every Haitian who's been murdered by the tom With Riobe reborn, our colorful tap-taps will roll until the heads of the Makuts do and are covered with people's stings. No dog meat anymore for bloodstreams half vampirized by the north. No more baskets full of bones or the teeth of baseballs fanging. Revolts the name of our flame are rioting with rage. Tupatu, Tupatu, Gonev, Port au Prince, Bombardopolis, Capatien with dusty roads in our mouths, with our bellies, the insides of drums that must be fed human food, not the narco coup pus that crushes, batches truth into its opponent, drinks glasses of thug. All the hype is empty trite. Clinton, Obama, Trump, a dingleberry dump in the ass of the new planetarian class. We cut the sugar cane in chains for generations. Now we're cutting the chains without electric, without telephones, who heard our machetes moaning. Only the zombie makers, only death's head flags flew over our pummeled villages though Haiti declared war against Nazi Germany even before the United States of America did. We read, no, we can't yet read, but will. We write, no, we don't write yet, but will. We know, yes, we know, the chains now are dead snakes at our feet, and there's a sweetness to our skin more powerful than death, as if we were the sugar we worked, as if it were ours and deliriously fragrant, we were cutting a field that welcomed our hands as brothers in arms in our bobo. Mambo, the world responds to the horror with what you are, love. The eyelid of a dead child of nine feels your kiss. The people keep you as a caress in the, ca in the days ahead, a cargo of joy, even as Haiti's hellish miseries continue. Three, one day in the future, these sounds are seeds of, there will be a moment when not even the monkeys chirp in the trees, when burros will hold their braids, when the coconut milky clouds 
won't stir in the sky with the thatch work of huts won't be gossiping and there's no breeze or sweat between your body and your rags. One day when that moment lived for years, for centuries is here and everything is still like death or zombie bread holding its breath, a drum will begin sounding and then another and another multiplying and the voices of the simidors will be heard in every field and the back, those backs with everything written on them which have been bent like nails hammered into the wooden cross of the land for ages will plunge their arms into the ground and pull out the weapons they planted for the drums aren't an invitation to a voodoo ceremony. The lambs are growing, growling lions of Africa, and it isn't uh, the cranium of a horse hung on a wooden cross braided with lines. It isn't a wooden cross at all that's planted in the good earth of New Haiti on the night of that day. The taste of a mango will be rapturous fireworks bursting and dying into the ecstasy of the simple truth in our mouths. Our acres will sleep with their arms around each other. The child, freed from terror and death, will bound with the boundless and the maze, amaze the sky upon waking for as long as humanity is.
mourn the loss of valley and mountains as they move to windy flatlands, and the mind continues to kill with silicosis, and satisfy those who exploit the land for temporal wealth, while the reindeer move quietly, large eyes wondering, gazing at the dancing northern lights who sing of moon and sun, and help to weave the Milky Way, illuminating rooms, telling stories. Um, is it interesting? Thank you. Uh, they have many legends about the northern lights, and they are as if they were live creatures, dancing and praying and changing the land. Um, it's a very marvelous series of stories that you can learn about my ancestors of Northern Sea. This one is, um, because this is Black History, African American History Month, I wrote a poem, Slavery in the Name of Jesus. You may know that the first ship that sent slaves had the name Jesus, Jesus of Lubeck. And it was once owned by the Brits. So we're like a long history of, of exploitation in slavery and all the capitalists who came from that, starting with our wonderful mother country. Over 300 years ago, slaves were brought from Africa, victims of politics, injustice, and yes, Christianity. The first slave ship was named Jesus, Jesus of Lubeck, commandeered by John Hawkins, owned by Queen Elizabeth, first sending Africans to the Caribbean to work for white masters if they survived the journey. The ships returned with rum, sugar, textiles, tea, to enrich the British Empire. Later, America did the same, transporting black Africans in cramped, diseased lower decks to serve plantation owners if they survived the journey, and make them wealthy, returning the ships full of cotton, goods for African traders, goods to create wealth on the back of blacks. Sir John Newton, composer of the hymn Amazing Grace, as well as how sweet the name of Jesus sounds, sent slaves to America, sanctifying slavery with words of the Apostle Paul, exhorting slaves to be submissive to their masters, to be submissive to pervasive injustice. King James I of the King James Version of the Bible owned and sold slaves, originally sent to eponymous Jamestown, quoting the Bible to justify the horror of slavery, an institution that made possible capitalism and wealth for the British Empire and later for plantation owners in white America. America built on slavery, lynching, violence, murder, built on the black African, the first pillar of capitalism, British Empire and American Empire, built on slavery, built on injustice. to the USA. Everyone wants to come to the USA where poverty huddles under tall buildings and in doorsteps or on curbs or roams the streets with shopping carts. Anger overwhelms the poor, overwhelms the refugee, overwhelms all those who see a country of abundance, a country of the free, where poverty is most plentiful and costs nothing. Paradise of beaches and markets of organic produce, grocery stores with full shelves and bright windows face a man lying on the curb, imprinting his body on cardboard underneath a tattered blanket. Everyone comes to the USA if they can, but they must pay. Land of plenty built on slaves, now imprisoning refugees, splitting up families, children cry in desperation, sent away to destinations still unknown to them or parents, who once fled the gun in Guatemala or El Salvador to face the border guard across the Rio Grande, fleeing one terror to be caught in another, while their children cry out, madre, father, mother, Everyone wants to come to America. Okay, lastly I'm going to introduce remarks by Paul Bolden of the West Western Regional Advocacy Project. Paul Bolden.
of the organizations that are in this building and that have been in this building and that have been the spirit of this building. And it's not just about what we do individually as organizations, it's about what we all do as a community. And there's a place in this city that still exists, and that's here. And we weren't the first, we won't, well, fuck, we might be the last. But we weren't sure as hell we weren't the first. This is where community groups come together. Whatever differences we might have isn't about, we don't agree with each other, it's about we have different priorities, but we all come from a human rights context. We all come from this is about our community. And we all understand that you fuck over one group of people, you're messing with all of us, and we are going to band together to fight back. I come from the streets. I, I, I was homeless at 16. I come from the streets. I could say, oh, everything's about being homeless. No, it ain't. Everything is about human rights, classism, and racism in this fucking colonizing country that we live in. And if we want to see a change, we have to make a change. And we can't just ask for that. We have to fight for that. We have to band together and understand when we talk human rights, we're talking all of us. And we need to understand that whether you come from the streets, whether you're talking about the education system, where kids that somehow education isn't seen as uplifting when it's about poor people, but it's tax credits for rich fuckers. Fuck that. We talk about housing is charity when it's poor people, and it's $34 billion a year, but we do $140 billion a year in tax credits for homeowners. And that's economic stimulus. But when it's for poor people, it's charity and you have to be worthy and you can't be arrested and you have to have been born here and you have to be able to document and you can't have people sleeping in your unit. You know what? When no homeowner in this country would tolerate the federal government walking into their home and counting toothbrushes, poor people tolerate that shit every day. And so as we band together and understand that this is about fighting oppression, and it's not about asking for something different, it's about demanding because God damn it, this is our government and you work for us, and if you don't work for us, you need to get the hell out. This is a building that breeds that. It's a building that allows our little group, RAP, Western Regional Advocacy Project, and I ain't gonna give you the website, and I ain't gonna ask for a freaking donation. This is a building that lets us sleep here on this floor when we have our gatherings every year because we all come from LA Skid Row. We all come from Denver. We all come from Portland. We gather here every year. We sleep on this floor on mats because it's important to us that we unite our fights and our struggles and we connect our struggles that we're human rights groups that happen to have come from the streets of Skid Row, of Portland, of Denver, of Sacramento, of Oakland, of San Francisco, and we ain't taking this shit no more. We need this space to be able to continue to do that work and to expand that work and to grow that work and to bring art and theater and movies and music into that work. And this space is vital. And we ain't walking out on our fucking knees. We're walking out in handcuffs if we walk out of here. We've done Scott squatting before. We're gonna squat this goddamn place if they try to take it away from us. Because whether they kick your ass or not, at least you fought. And fighting is what's important. Winning is vital in the long run. But if we don't fight now and get our butts kicked, like we learned with the union struggles, like we learned when the people in the Appalachian Mountains were getting gunned down with Gatling guns, like we learned you don't get nothing 
without a demand. You don't get nothing without a struggle. And you don't get nothing without a fight. And we're going to fight to keep this place, whether Med is able to buy it or not. We ain't walking out on our knees. That ain't no goddamn well that could happen. Thank you all for being here. Stone Labor Temple Association, Gary Gregerson. He's going to say a few words and then cut the birthday cake up here. Uh, we've got four pies for, uh, donated by Mission Pie, and uh, people can line up over here to get a serving. And, and uh, here's Gary. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, well, I, didn't, I wasn't really prepared to speak, but. Uh, <laughs> Just want to say thanks, everyone. We really appreciate everybody being here. Um, thanks, Gary. Sure, yeah. I got, I got the. Uh, who, who all here is a tenant in the building, actually, or who comes to the building on a regular basis? You know what I mean? You know, and there's thousands of people that come to this building every year. So yeah, we do definitely are going to keep this building in community hands, no matter what. Um, you know, there's and there. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been following much around, like, you know, every artists and small businesses and nonprofits being displaced. Well, in the mission, a lot of those places that have been displaced, a lot of the people have wound up here, you know what I mean? So there's really not that much, nowhere else to go hardly, you know what I mean? In the mission, so it's really important that we keep up tight. Um, and I also got the horoscope of this building done by a friend of mine. They read the building's chart. And apparently this is what we really needed, was some kind of, you know, something really festive. He doesn't even believe it. You, but look, it's going to work. I, I promise it's going to work. All right, so we got the cake ready. Wait, what's the horoscope say? Cake? Oh, the horoscope said we needed to have fun. Something festive. What else? Oh, like, are we going to win? Then the horoscope. Oh, the sign is Virgo. That was when the cornerstone was laid on the building. Today is the actual day the building opened, but the cornerstone was laid in se September. So yes, very good.
Alright, so in a moment uh, we're going to turn on the lights and then we'll play this 10 uh, video clip uh, edited and video recorded by our, by our intern from South Carolina Lakes this spring semester. So uh, please pay attention and enjoy. Our mission 
is to take in animals that are at severe risk of being euthanized because of health or behavior problems. We bring them in, we don't keep anyone here, but we find foster homes for them and then we get them on our web page, do adoption events and get them adopted to the public. That means a lot because this is oh how I can take it over in the house. We take it as we take it as a house, I can say that way. It's a home. It's a place where we always come in and we, where we know we can find our sisters and um, all the help we need. This is like a home. This is not just a building. It's a house and it's it's a pregnant of all those uh, dreams and all whatever we um, we are looking for. It's uh, also help with us. It's a uh, it's a home. It's 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 everything for us. And really, we kind we are kind of sad knowing that it's probably that are uh, getting sale that are uh, this um this building. And we like we don't wanna drop all those uh, dreams that we have and also our participants have. And we don't want to be out of this building. Actually this building means a lot to us. So it comes home and it's like a home, like a house for us. It just means it's a place that, you know, hadn't been here this long, seeing the Mission Neighborhood Resource Center created here, knowing that BLO actually had their first practices here, working with the artists and the groups that are here, the Pearl Magazine people that were upstairs, Ayuda, the Living Wage Coalition, and having that sense of artwork. You see the hallways that all have artwork in it. It's all about a, it's a human rights, you know, symposium of organizations and artists that are striving to bring pride to our community. And it's within a community that we're rapidly losing. And watching what's happening throughout this city, I'm coming out of the Tenderloin, I've been at 16th and Mission, between those two places, I, that's 36 years. Uh, watching Valencia Street become Yucky Central, uh, watching downtown become absolutely brutal to not just homeless people, poor people, anyone that ain't shopping, vendors, buskers, artists that are out on the street trying to sell their wares to survive. Um, this is a neoliberal community and we need to fight that shit and this is the place where we do it. I'll tell you, what the building means to me is this, I remember having a bank account up on the third floor. I remember working for a uh, circuit network down the hallway Gosh, probably like over 15 or 18 years ago. You know, the building has been here for so many organizations for a very long time. The building has also had affordable rents. A lot of the groups and individuals that are here could not be here because wouldn't be in the city because of the, the current situation. And we need, for, for the activists, for the artists, really for all people, we need affordable spaces. And that's what this has been. It's also a community space. So it's close to my house for those reasons. Yes, uh, I think uh, this building is, uh, is a landmark. And uh, I have been here a few, few weeks in this place, but uh, I really feel that it's a place of, of creativity and um, uh, resistance and, and uh, a place where people um, are um, uh, capable of people, you know, I, I've seen different, different people, different uh, uh, um, uh, women, men, LGBT, you know, so it's a, it's, it's a nice, nice, nice place, and I hope to, um, I hope to people realize to uh, fight for this, to, to, for this place to keep it open for the community.